Hi, um, my name is Jim O'Shaughnessy. I'm in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Worcester Polytech. And uh, I'd like to talk to you about um, some of my experiences in developing an undergraduate course that involves teaching sustainability to engineering students, some of the advantages and challenges that we've encountered along the way. I think you may find them somewhat interesting. Uh, while some engineering courses are discipline specific and generally taught within an individual department, there are topics that uh, can be taught across department lines and don't have these types of boundaries. Uh, due to its multidisciplinary um, nature, uh, we thought about teaching a course that looked at um, sustainability issues, in particular environmental impacts uh, of engineering decisions on the wide engineering uh, audience on the different engineering departments at WPI. To give you an idea of um, what was involved in developing this course, uh, over the past 20 years we've been developing courses in, in different uh, concepts of sustainability and aimed at engineering students. Initially we started back in 18, uh, 1987, not in 1897, in 1989 with a graduate class called environmental issues in manufacturing. Uh, it was focused on the manufacturing processes, uh, waste and the waste byproducts that are generated and recycled. It was taught by um, two faculty members and we had a few uh, guest lecturers. Most of the assignments were individual student assignments. Uh, in uh, the interim years, we switched to environmentally conscious design and we kept focusing on the manufacturing process and the waste, but we brought in things like pollution prevention, design for the environment, design for disability, toxic use reduction, and life cycle assessment. And as it evolved, um, the majority of the, were, of the lectures were by outside uh, guests and there were very few WPI faculty lectures. And we had a mixture of both individual and group assignments. Where we are today is a, um, a course they call Green Engineering that's been expanded to include um, market identification for products, development of a business plan, and the development of a green product or a green service. Everything in the, um, in the course are group assignments and most of the, uh, most of the lectures are by outside uh, experts. Along with the coursework, over the past 20 years we've had a number of other activities, both in terms of academic and research activities. Uh, we were involved with the Massachusetts Toxic Use Reduction Institute and we helped them through continuing education to develop, develop training courses in toxic use reduction. Um, we've dealt with different areas of um, hazardous waste and pollution prevention. Uh, we've had undergraduate student um, projects both in terms of student exchange and students working with companies on pollution prevention and other environmental products. Uh, we've had a number of uh, uh, projects with um, the private industry. Uh, we've had a doctoral program that involved environmental management issues and then finally uh, we had a major uh, project with a number of schools, the Realization Consortium, and that's where we came up with the environmentally conscious uh, design and manufacturing concept. The results are a gradual level course that uses outside lecture and uh, is aimed at team or group assignments. Now at the undergraduate level, uh, the accrediting board, ABET, requires the, uh, one of the requirements is the ability to design a system component or process to meet desired needs within economic, environmental, social, and you can see now sustainability uh, considerations. Uh, as a result, the decision was made to try and develop a cross-department engineering science course that would uh, address this. Uh, other topics such as fluid mechanics, uh, heat transfer and thermodynamics are caught, uh, taught this way 
and we decided to develop a course called Environmental Impacts on Engineering Decisions. Uh, a number of challenges immediately became obvious, the first being the breadth of topics available for coverage. It would have been simpler to develop a course focusing on a specific engineering discipline and use sustainability issues associated with that with professional practice. Um, by incorporating many engineering disciplines, it was thought that the diversity of topics could be a problem. Uh, the thinking was that a mechanical engineer would only have interest in topics associated with mechanical engineering, but civil was civil and so on. So we picked out a number of topics uh, that we thought would be included, and in doing so we looked at what type of application we could use them in and what majors would be interested in. You can see the major topics were water, energy generation, manufacturing, automobiles and electronics, and a number of things were uh, looked at that had a lot of commonality. And as you can see over here, uh, uh, were issues that most engineering uh, disciplines evaluated. Uh, then we also looked at environmental toxins, risk assessment, life cycle assessment, and finally global climate change. Uh, these three topics right here uh, we can use in case studies and in assignments and the global climate change is a, both a controversial and political as well as technical issue that touches all engineering disciplines. The second major challenge, there was not currently an engineering textbook that specifically addressed these topics. There were some other textbooks on the uh, market we could use, but it isn't one that we felt uh, was just ideal that would be what we needed to support this course. A third challenge was how to present materials at a sophomore and junior level that allow the students to relate and accept the concepts and the approaches that are used in problem solutions. On undergraduate engineering courses, we have two basic approaches uh, to learning. Uh, first is called linear analysis, and the second is engineering design. Uh, in linear analysis, we have engineering analysis coupled with uh, basic scientific principles. Start at a given point, you go through a series of, of calculations and come up with a given solution. With the design approach, you again start using scientific principles and engineering analysis, but there are many questions and options as you go through the design process. And so you don't end up with one final design, but rather a number of designs of which you, for some reason, determine which would be the optimal design. In looking at uh, sustainability issues, we get into a holistic approach where we have to look at both science and engineering analysis, but also social science issues, other issues, policy, politics, uh, legal issues. And so we get a multitude of tasks that have to be carried out. And again, you come back perhaps with not one specific solution. And the problem is how do you get that involved in the courses? Uh, some of the advantages, uh, most of the major topics are, can be applied to engineering courses, uh, especially courses heavy in engineering design. In addition, many are part of their everyday um, life experiences. The second advantage to the broad approach that is requires a student to somewhat uh, do a technical analysis, even though narrow and basic, on some engineering problem technologies outside of their major field. And this breadth in the curriculum should help the graduating engineers feel more comfortable as they tackle broader based engineering challenges. A third advantage in this type of course is that there have been a number of computer programs and web links that can support the course materials. Um, two programs and one website that have been particularly helpful are CES EduPack that was developed uh, by uh, Granta and a life cycle assessment developed by Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and web link is how things are made that was developed by Stanford University. In conclusion, uh, the development of this course uh, turned out to be much more interesting than frustrating. That's usually not the case. Sometimes projects become much more frustrating than interesting. And the student response 
response to this course has been extremely positive. If you would like to contact me, here's the information, and thank you for your attention.